of the kingdom You have to be born again If you want to enter the kingdom You have to be born again Born again Nicodemus, yeah, he visited Jesus. He wanted to ask a question that was really serious. He said, Teacher, we know you're a man that sent from God. I know me visiting you right now might be odd. Before he could ask his question, yeah, Jesus said, You must be born again in the very end, or you will never see the kingdom of God. To Nicodemus, this would have sounded very odd. Hello everyone, it's that time again. It's time for the Teach Me to Obey radio broadcast with me, your host, Anita Punchi Lewis. Well, let me apologize first of all for the sound of my voice. It's sports time for the primary schools. So of course I attended the sports and that means using the big voice that he blessed me with. So as a result of being such an active cheerleader... <laughs> My voice is on the horse side right now, so excuse the sound. I'm still able to speak, so for that, I'm thankful. And I'm still able to be here on the Teach Me to Obey radio broadcast. Yes. All right. So for the past few weeks, I have been speaking on being born again. I read you the account from John chapter 3, verses 1 to 7, between Jesus and Nicodemus, when Jesus was telling Nicodemus about the fact that he needed to be born again in order to see the kingdom of God, in order to enter into the kingdom of God. For the past three weeks, I think it has been, I have been on the many deceptive, well, some of them actually, because of course, I don't know all of them. So I spoke on some of the many deceptive religious substitutes that would cause us to think that we are born again, when in actual fact, we are not. It is said that knowledge is power and, you know, knowing the truth brings freedom. I have been quoting the scripture for many weeks now that we shall know the truth and it shall make us free. It shall bring freedom to us. So we are here to get the truth from God's word, not what I say, not what I think, not my opinion, but simply from the word of God. The B-I-B-L-E. Okay. So being born again, you have to be born again to enter into the kingdom of God. Today, it is time for self-examination. And this is biblical. We must examine ourselves. How can I, how can you sincerely examine ourselves to be sure that we have experienced a spiritual rebirth to know that we are regenerated by the Spirit of God? How can we sincerely examine ourselves according to John chapter 3, verses 3, verses 5, and verses 7, where Jesus spoke with Nicodemus? Now, John chapter 3, verses 3 says, Jesus replied, truly, truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Verse 5 of the same chapter says, Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. And verse 7 says, Do not be amazed that I said, You must be born again. So clearly, The Bible lays down the principle for much-needed self-examination. We must know that we are born again. This principle is actually found in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28, and it states, Let a man therefore examine himself. Let a man check himself. Let a man judge himself, if you want to say that. But examine yourself. Be honest with yourself. It is absolutely imperative that self-examination be conducted. Listeners, We have a real enemy who is a master at deception and he works overtime to carry out his job. He is a pro at deceiving people, the believers, unsaved people. He's a pro at doing his best to deceive us. Deception is one of the most deadliest yet the most effective weapons that he has in his 
arsenal. And it is only the truth revealed by the spirit of truth himself which can save us from this deadly weapon. Truth brings deliverance. Truth exposes the lies of the enemy. Truth brings freedom. My goodness. So we want to live in truth. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. He brings truth. He is truth himself. So we need truth to bring us deliverance. We need truth to be able to expose the deceptions of the devil, our enemy. We need the truth. So with this being said, let us continue to take a look at what the Bible has to say about this topic of self-examination. So as I said, 1 Corinthians 28 tells us what to do. It tells us to examine yourself. Now in 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5, it tells us why we are to examine ourselves. So I'm going to read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5. And I'm going to read it from four, one, two, three, four different translations. Okay. So the NIV says, examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. That's from the NIV. The NLT, the New Living Translation says, examine yourselves to see if your faith is genuine. Test yourselves. The GNT, which is the Good News Translation, it says, put yourselves to the test and judge yourselves to find out whether you are living in the faith. And the last translation, which is the CEV, says, test yourselves and find out if you really are true to your faith. If you pass the test, you will discover that Christ is living in you. But if Christ isn't living in you, you have failed the test. I want to read over that translation there, the CEV. My goodness, I like that. It says, test yourselves and find out if you really are true to your faith. If you pass the test, you will discover that Christ is living in you. In other words, you will discover that you are born again. But if Christ isn't living in you, you have failed the test, meaning that you are not spiritually born again, meaning that you have not experienced a spiritual rebirth, meaning that you are not regenerated. It's simple, my goodness, that is in the Bible. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. And the version that I read from you, the translation just now, the nice translation is actually from the CEV translation. Now, 1 Corinthians eleven thirty one. yes, this is one, two, three scriptures now that I'm pulling from the book of Corinthians written by the Apostle Paul. 1 Corinthians eleven thirty one clearly states, for if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. If we judge ourselves, if we examine ourselves, if we are honest with ourselves, then we would not need to be judged. We have a responsibility to examine ourselves. Come on. The Bible tells us that. Examine yourself. Test yourself. And if we do that, according to Paul in 1 Corinthians 11, 31, then we would not need anyone to do that. We would not be judged if we judge ourselves. Now, we have just looked at the fact that the Bible encourages us to examine ourselves to see if we are in the faith or not, to see if we are born again or not. But what are we going to examine or test ourselves with? What is the test paper? You know, you're in school and in order for the teacher to really find out, okay, let me see if she understands, if she remembers what I taught. I'm going to give you a test. I have to set a test paper. So what is it that we are going to, you know, how are we going to examine ourselves? What is it that we're going to use? Can you think of some natural instruments of measurement that we can use to test ourselves to see if we are born again or if we are in the faith? Can you? Can you? Think, 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 think. Okay. So here we go. So you'll see if what you came up with is what I am going to be speaking about according to the scriptures. So instrument of measurement number one. Appetite for the word of God. First Peter chapter 2 verse 2 reads, Like newborn babes, you must crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. Cry out for this nourishment. That is from the New Living Translation. And I'm going to read it again. First Peter chapter 2 verse 2. It says, like newborn babies, you must crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. Cry out for this nourishment. There must be a hunger for the word. There must be an appetite for the word. That is what this is. Like newborn babies, I mean, most of you, 99%, if not 100% of you who are listening to me, 
have been around, have babies. If you don't even have babies, you've been around niece, nephew, whatever it is, cousin. You have been around a newborn baby. And you hear them crying out for the milk. You hear them opening up their mouth. Oh my goodness. And they're blaring when they want the mother's milk. Whether it's the mother's milk or the buttermilk. They cry and they cry aloud because they want this. There's a hunger for the milk. I need this in order to live. I need this. I need the milk. I'm going to cry for the milk. So the scripture is telling us like newborn babies, we too are supposed to cry out for this full experience you know we're supposed to cry for this nourishment so that we will grow we will grow we will grow as believers we need to cry out for the milk so as a newborn baby naturally craves and cries out for milk we too must as newborn babes as people who are born again we must also do the same thing for the truly born again there will be an automatic inward hunger for the word of God. There will be an automatic inward hunger for the word of God. Nobody is supposed to be forcing you to say to you, okay, come on, read the word, get in the word. No, as a born again believer, there will be an automatic inward hunger for the word of God. You will just want to crave this word. You will just want to be in the word of God. Oh my word. I'm saying this and I'm, memories are coming back to me here. Okay. I remember when I got born again in the first stages, you know, as I was a newborn babe. Oh, I used to just love to be in the word. Honestly, I loved it. I still love it. I still love it. I used to be in the word. I used to get home from work and I just used to be in the word. I remember one morning getting up and after I went for my walk and I came back and I was just sitting down there and I was in the word and I'm like God do I have to leave this today to go to work really do I have to leave this I just want to be in the word I just loved being in the word because as you read the word my goodness there's so much understanding that comes in revelation and it's like you were in darkness before being born again and then now you're literally in the light so you're seeing things and the Holy Spirit is just showing you things and letting you know the scripture speaks about the fact that the word it is a mirror in front of us it shows us who we really are and it's like, okay, I need to change this change that must come because God's word is saying this, and this is my mirror. This is what causes me to want to live right for him, to do the things which please him. So we need to get into the word. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. For the truly born again, there will be an intense inner desire to hear the words of Christ and his voice. You want to hear from him. Mm? You want to hear from him. You want to hear his voice. You're born again. These are signs again instrument of measurement for us to really see if we are born again. So if you're professing that you're a believer, that you're a Christian, that you're born again and you don't have an automatic inward hunger for the word, you don't have an inner desire to hear the words of Christ and his voice. Okay, you got to really see to yourself, be honest. Am I really born again? Because just in the same way that a newborn baby cries out for spiritual milk, this would be automatic for us as born again believers. It's just automatic. For the truly born again, they would desperately want to find a Bible and devour what is in it. Oh my goodness. Mm? You would just want to find a Bible. You just It's like you just want to eat the word you want to live. <laughs> You just want to be in the word. I remember just before I left to go to Bible school, I had gotten a study Bible. A friend of mine, she was living in England at the time. She's since come home to live. And she sent me a study Bible for my birthday. And I got the study Bible. And oh my goodness, I was just inside of the word morning, noon and night, honestly. Just desperately wanting to just be in the word. It was sweet. The scripture speaks about it. You know, your word is sweeter than honey to my lips. Is that sweet? It really is. And as newborn babes, as born again believers, these things would be automatic. We would want to devour the word. We'd want to get into the word. Because what it is our manual for living is telling us how God expects us to live. It is how we are supposed to live to please him. It is how we are supposed to be obedient to him. So we would want to just devour this word. We just want to eat it and drink it. You know, the scripture says that they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, after right living, how we are supposed to know how we are supposed to live right. The word, the word, the word. So as born again people, these things are supposed to be automatic. For the truly born again, they would be in a state of mind where they cannot wait until, you know, like you reach home. You cannot wait to get into the word and saturate yourself in it. I remember when I, I again, sorry that I'm laughing like this, you know, because I'm, you know, memories are coming back. Memories. I was working at LDA at the time and my lunch break. And I used to go, I think I spoke about this before on another broadcast down in Little Bay 
in between Ponce Beach Bar and then the other building there that belongs to Uncle Arthur Mead. Yes, you can drive right between there. And I used to just go right between there and park. And my lunch hour was spent there. I had my bag packed with my Bible, a notepad. And I was just, well, my Bible is actually because it was more than one that I had. Different translations. And my lunch hour would be spent with me getting in the Word, being in the Word. I just loved it. I would finish working. And in the afternoons, I'm on the back road, like, you know, going to the dump site, New Windward. And there's a road going down to a, as I said before, it's not a beach beach, but I used to drive down there. I never met anybody down there. It's just this lonely place. But I just so wanted to get away from the disturbance of the phone ringing, people calling me because signal down there was not so good. So getting away from somebody coming by me or whatever, I just wanted this time to just be in the word and just to be praying. So these things are just instruments of measurement to let us know that we are born again, our appetite for the word of God. How much do I want to get into the word? How much do I want to saturate myself in the word? How much of a hunger do I have to be in the word? Mm? For the truly born again, they would desperately, desperately want to be where the words of Christ are preached or where the words of Christ are taught whether it's a Bible study, whether it's, you know, in a service, you just want to be there because you just want to hear what the word of God is saying. You just want to hear from him. You just want to hear from him. For the truly born again, no one has to beg you to hunger for the word. No one ever begs a newborn baby to cry out for milk. You don't say, baby, cry for the milk. No, it is automatic. They cry for the milk because they're hungry, because they want the milk, because they need the milk. They crave it. Likewise, as born again believers, we are supposed to do what? Crave, my goodness, to be in the word. We're supposed to crave that. We are supposed to want to be in the word. We're not supposed to be forced. Mm? No one ever taught or trained or urged or forced a newborn baby to want milk, you know, unless the baby is sick and, of course, the baby is not eating as he or she should. Well, the very same thing goes for those who are truly born again. All of the above that I would have just said would come naturally because of the new spiritual being or the new spiritual nature. The word of Jehovah is the food for those who are born again. And we would naturally automatically crave it once our spirits have come alive. Mm? He is the real test. Is your greatest delight and joy in the instructions and teachings of Jehovah God? Do we really want to, you know, be obedient to him? Because his word says, if you love me, you're going to obey me. You know, here's what the scripture says. Joshua 1 verse 8. And I'm reading from the NLT, the New Living Translation. And it says, study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so that you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. I'm going to read it again. Joshua 1 verse 8. And I'm reading from the NLT translation. It says, study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night. We're talking about the B-I-B-L-E, the word of God. So meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. Psalm 1 verse 2 says, and this is the Amplified Version translation. But his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law, his precepts and teachings. He habitually meditates day and night. I'm going to read that again. Psalm 1 verse 2, the Amplified Translation says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law, his precepts and teachings. He habitually meditates day and night. This is talking about being in the word of God. As we can see, meditating on the word does not only appear in Joshua 1, but also in Psalm 1 verse 2. Once the Lord has spoken, twice we are hearing it. Once in Joshua 1 8, twice in Psalm 1 verse 2. Should we then, as kingdom seekers, ignore this clear instruction from our king? If we really, you know, being obedient to him, if we are seeking his kingdom, if we are born again believers... Joshua 1 verse 8 teaches us how to practically handle what the Lord says to us via his written word, the Logos, hmm? or his spoken word, the Rhema. We are supposed to, oh my goodness, oh, we're supposed to meditate on it day and night so that what? We would obey so that we will obey so that we will obey. If we don't know the word, what are we obeying? 
we must be in the word. We must have a hunger for the word of God. Psalm 1 verse 2 teaches us the same thing. Do you see it? Do you see it? Psalm 1 verse 2. But his delight and desire are in the law of the Lord and in his law, the precepts, the instructions, the teachings of Jehovah. He habitually meditates. He ponders and studies day and night. Remember, if one is truly born again, he or she will have a natural hunger, an innate desire for the instructions and teachings of Jehovah God and would naturally meditate. There would be a desire to meditate, to feed on the word of God day and night, just as a real baby naturally craves for the milk. Nobody should be forcing you. You can't be saying, oh gosh, I'm too busy to read. Really? You're too busy to read the word. You don't have a hunger. You don't want to hear from God. You don't want to hear what he has to say. Psalm 1 verse 2 says, his delight. Notice the word here is delight. You desire it. You want to do it. You're excited about it. Delight really refers to joy, happiness, gladness, great pleasure, excitement, bliss, elation. You want to do this thing. Nobody is forcing you to do it. So your delight, your desire, you're glad to do it. You find great pleasure in what? In the law of the Lord to meditate upon it day and night. So we have to do self-examination. So that was just, you know, one of the instruments of measurement that we are using to see what? If we are born again. And the instrument of measurement is what? Our appetite for the word of God. We have to be honest with ourselves because if not, we're fooling ourselves. We're deceiving ourselves. And deception is not really amounting to anything. So listeners... This brings us to the end of today's broadcast, the Teach Me to Obey radio broadcast. So hear this. Is there a joy within you to meditate, think deeply upon the word of God, the teachings that you are receiving? Is there a joy? Is there an excitement in your heart to listen to, you know, the word of God, to meditate upon it? Is there an excitement? Are you elated? Are you excited to really, you know, see what... The Holy Spirit is saying from the word of God. Are you excited to literally get in the word, listen to teachings, whatever it is? Are you excited? Remember that the number one test to see if you are truly or genuinely born again is your delight and joy in the instructions and teachings of Jehovah God. Just like a newborn baby naturally craves for milk. Is your delight and joy in his word? Do not be deceived. Be honest with yourself and examine yourself to see if you are in the faith, to see if you are born again. Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again to see the kingdom of God. You must be born again to enter the kingdom of God. We need to examine ourselves to see if that is our case. Do enjoy the rest of your evening. I leave you once again with the song, Be Born Again. You have to be born again. If you want to enter the kingdom, you have to be born again. If you want to enter the kingdom, to be born again. Born again. his question yeah jesus said you must be born again in the very end or you will never see the kingdom of god to nicodemus this word sounded very odd 